Hello friends, this is Novels in Bed and this is Monday edition. Alright, that means new story today. I'm so excited. How was your weekend by the way? Mine was nice. I kind of gay crashed the party. Okay, I won't say gay crashed. I knew one of the close friends to the bride. Okay, but either ways, it was fun. I got to see some old friends, make some new friends, and it was nice to go out. Plus, I ran a ton of errands that day, and that was kind of the climax. So, right now, I am in a new place, no longer the BQ, and there is a lot going on. And I am thankful that I'm not anxious because I think I might have been given a different scenario because some things are just not working at the moment the place i am in network is not the best and it's like oh, i think i i would choose a place where my network is to go well but even if data finished at least the network went well then you have data and then you're wondering ah why is this not working so those are just kind of the least of things going on with me now and trying to find an internship placement looks like i'll be practicing pharmacy for a bit while still doing all the other things i love but not keeping my day job. So advice to do the same, like keep that steady thing you like, but also to do all the stuff that you really enjoy and that lights you up, like this podcast that I'm doing. So let's go into what we have for today. Okay, so novels and bits listener, welcome. Today we're going to be just in... The Girl Who Stepped Into The Past by Sophia Baines. I think I am pronouncing her name right. Or rather, Bans. Whichever way you... You're saying the name there. Pronounce it the way you know. So, today... Eh? This story has, like, um, time travel. It has murder mystery. Like, there's a murder that happens. So, we're trying to solve that mystery. And then it has romance. It has historical... It's also historical fiction. So that's really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. And I... So here's how it started, really. Um, Jane, our lead female, she, she, like, she's, a, she's an author of historical romance novels. Although she wasn't like so sexful at it because her books don't sell that much, she was persistent and she kept working to create that book that will finally make her a bestseller, that kind of thing. So it was this devotion to keep improving and to keep writing that made her discover Somerville, an estate in the UK built in the 17th century. And she traveled there from the United States. She believed that By going there, she'll be able to have an experience that will impact her storytelling in such a way that her books would finally go into the limelight. Unfortunately for her, she had a fiancé, Geoffrey, who didn't like the idea that she was spending so much on this research quest. So, according to him, we need this money as part of your contribution to buy this house that we want to buy. And then the money we're going to use to fund our wedding, stuff like that. So... And the thing is that this Geoffrey guy considered her writing career as a hobby, not a real job. And then he claimed that it was destroying their relationship. So what it, what his, his resistance to what she was doing eventually did was put them in a situation that where he asked her, okay, see, you have to make a choice between your writing and me. And then Babe chose her writing and he ended things with her. Like, okay, or rather she ended things with him. Shadi ended things. And the thing is that, even as it ended things this way, Jane knew that if Geoffrey had been sensitive enough to suggest, okay, why not wait until we get this house so that you can go on your trip? Or, okay, why not get a, a, this thing, a nine to five that you can't do? Then in the evenings, you will write. Do you understand? Like, he could have done something like that, shown that he cared about what she was doing, and she would have agreed and they'll still be together. But Uncle just wanted to give her ultimatum and she could not settle for it. And the thing just made her say, ah, this is not my guy, let me leave him and go. But the thing also kind of failed her in terms of, okay, this guy thinks I cannot make it as a successful writer. Fine. I'm not going to believe him. The fine is not fine. Okay, he should go. It's fine. I'm going to prove to him wrong. I'm going to prove him wrong by becoming the successful writer he says I can be. So she went on the trip. On the same day she got settled in, like she arrived there, like close to, to an inn because she was lodging at this inn close to Somerville House, about 20 minutes walk. She just walked that distance. Oh, 
to that Marvel house to go and check it out. Please, at this point, if you're hearing rain falling, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not in, I've, I've tried to record this in a quiet place, but it's raining and I changed locations. So please take me as I am. Shall you just stay with me now? I, I feel the rain kind of also the magic of this story. Okay, well, this is just me trying to, <laughs> you know, bail myself out. Shasha, I hope it, it's not dampening or, you know, distracting you from the story. Let's continue, Justin. Yeah? So, Jane arrived at the Somerville house and it was fascinating to her. So, and then she came upon this palo and the palo was really pretty. Like, the, it was all bluish, different shades and they and they accredited and the person they credited the, this, like, that. The person they credited the design to, like, the person who designed that palo was the um was was the ill of Candem's sister lady tatiana she designed that palo in the 17th century the lady's um portraits lady in question her portrait was hung on the wall there and from it jane could see that she was very beautiful unfortunately records revealed that the woman died a year after that portrait was painted she actually kept on moving because she's on the house store right then in the library jane found a portrait of the l he was a handsome young man with dark hair, blue eyes, a dimple that made him appear boyish. So it was easy to admire him. But Jane's reaction stunned her. Like, her reaction was extra. Because she just started breathing fast, as if he was there in the room with her and actually watching her. She was like, what the heck? So to break that spell, she just left the room and just went to other rooms, jotting things down in her notebook, taking pictures with her phone camera. Then she now reached the garden. She was impressed. It was like so pretty. But soon the weather started changing and it looked like it was going to rain. A drop of rain fell on her and she quickly put her phone in her paws to protect it. But then there was a sudden heavy downfall and the thing just drenched her. She started to run for cover towards the main house. But just at the steps, there was this crack of lightning. It just peered the ground in front of her. Uh -uh. So she just halted. She was just so startled by the loud thunder. She tripped and dropped her purse. By the time she got up, she couldn't find the purse anymore. She was like, let me just go first and find a place to drink coffee or something away from this rain. When the rain sets, I can just come out and find this purse. Ah, Very wise, my life was. By this time, it had gotten dark and she couldn't see all that clearly. She nearly tripped again. But this time, it was because of a body in her path. Imagine, how is a body on the floor in front of you? From where? From the light illuminated by the occasional light and lightning. Because lightning was just coming and all of that. Jane could see that it was a female body that was dressed in an expensive gown. And the face belonged to Tatiana. Yep, that same portrait she saw in the palo, the sister of the handsome man. There was flowing blood on Tatiana's neck. And Jane had shout she heard shouts coming from inside the manor. Next thing, the doors flung open. Several people just appeared in front of her. But one person was prominent. He marched towards her in anger. And Jane noticed that nothing about his expression was welcoming. Like it had been in the portraits of him she saw at the library. You know that fine guy now? The dark hair, blue eyes one that was making her heart race. So while all of this was happening, Jane felt as if she were in a trance. I mean, this just couldn't be real. So Jane was jolted to reality when the man, the Earl of Camden, threatened to hang her for Tatiana's mother. He demanded who she was, and at once, Jane recognized the situation that she was in. Like, Omo, they found you standing over a body that the neck was sliced, and you are dead. Nobody knows who you are. Like, it's looking like you're the one who did it, Abby. So, but, so she was like, Jesus, how am I going to get out of this one? How am I going to prove to these people I'm not the one who did this thing? So to get, to get a grasp of whatever was going on, Jane was like, please, what is today's date? They just assumed, ah, she's mad. And he was like, take her to my study. So they kept her there in his study. And while she was there, she was just making calculations. She was like, oh my God, I'm the year 1818. And they're suspecting me to be Tatiana's murderer. And the person who did this thing was never found, according to records. And Jane wondered how she could convince anybody, everybody that it wasn't her. You know, to make matters worse, after this lady was murdered, like even in the future, where Jane is coming from, this lady's murder was never solved. Like nobody, they didn't find her killer. And the, Jane in, the James in question, like the Earl of Camden, her brother, did not, remar did not marry at all. So, like, the, knowing the history of this was what was in vogue in future, she cannot even come and start pointing to anybody. So she's as good as them who is totally in the dark about who could have killed this girl. And the worst part is that she's the most likely culprit at this point. So how, what is she going to do? do you get so on james part he was with snipes and hendrix who were his secretary and butler when he heard the scream and then he rushed out to find a blonde haired beauty who was jane like jane is blonde she'll start and jane has green eyes so i'm just kind of training that extra bit so that i can 
you know imagine her she's really pretty so any model you know maybe Gigi had it does Gigi had it have green eyes okay either ways forget the distraction let's move on so either ways this was him and he just had to scream he's coming out and then he's finding this blonde haired beauty standing over his sister's lifeless body and she's looking shocked and confused so James cried he just literally cried at the loss of his sister out there in the rain you know and the thing was that this this is sister Tatiana who, who was just mother. She was supposed to be asleep in her bedroom. Why was she down there? He felt like he'd failed her by not protecting her and he vowed to punish whoever was responsible. So first of all, since his clothes had gotten bloody by him checking out everything, he just changed out of it and then he went to confront Jane in the study. He has to be left alone to interrogate her, which was not proper given the day and time. His, the, the Hendrix, the butler, was like, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. He was just like, does this look like a time to care about what's proper? So he noticed she wasn't dressed in a style of clothing of the times. Her hair wasn't styled or tucked underneath. It was just falling on her, past her shoulders in a way that was making him imagine, you know, hair spread out on pillow. And yeah, this is not the kind of thoughts you should be having in that circumstance. Like, that kind of thing. So it was easy for James to notice that she wasn't British because of her first speech as a way. Because Auntie was trying to speak, to speak in old English. So it was not like, why is your speech sounding that way? It was like, are you a spy or an assassin? So Jane laughed, although she wasn't meant to. And Jane was, James was just incredulous. Like, how could she laugh at a time like this? He used his literal tone on her. You know, the one that made people afraid. And it worked when Jane flinched. As though he'd slapped her. Did you just notice the names the author is James and Jane? Like, it's as if she did not make effort with the names. <laughs> well, sometimes writing is hard. So, sometimes just focus on the story rather than the names. But I still like interesting names, Sha. I'm not going to lie. The names in this story were just so not normal to me. But, you know, the story is great. So, let's focus on the story. So, Jane didn't know how to answer the question of how she was wandering on his property at night. Like, how did he come to be wandering here? So she lied that she came to find a job there. She explained that she came from America and the funds on her family. So when she spotted his ex she was like, yes, an opportunity to make money as a maid. So after watching, for, after watching her for a while without saying anything, James said she remained in his estate under lock and key until he confirmed that she really had nothing to do with his sister's mother. So the housekeeper now showed Jane to a lovely room. They brought for her water to bathe and clothes to change into. The English and their hospitality, eh? even under conditions like this. Or maybe it's because the ale likes her. I don't know. But Shadi treated her well, for so, in as much as they locked her inside the room. Oh. But the room was fine. They treated her well, that kind of thing. So while James was alone in his study, he was just contemplating everything James told him. And then his observations about her. He knew she was lying straight up. And he knew a judge would find her guilty. But... She wasn't trying to go far from Somerville because if she were really the murderer, she'd be trying to run away, Abby. But her story was binding her day, and his, inst his instincts were just telling her this baby is innocent. Meanwhile, the housekeeper prepared Tatiana's body to look presentable because her personal maid was nowhere to be found. The maid Betsy was spirited and lively. James was just like, Ah, I hope this maid does not did not have anything to do with this murder. Meanwhile, he stopped at Jane's room later to ask if she was comfortable. And when she said she was, was she was like, but there's just one thing. She was hungry. But she didn't say so because she didn't want to bother the servants. And then her reason struck James because a criminal wouldn't bother about disturbing servants. Abby? So, on his own, by himself, a whole L, like, is a very big position. He went down to the kitchen himself, brought her something to eat. Jane wasn't, and by, t you know, he entered her room to give her the food because initially he was starting to have from outside the door when he was asking her if she's okay but as he brought the food he entered the room he had to unlock the room and enter the, the key was just hanging outside of the door there so people from outside can enter but she cannot come out but so jane wasn't clothed in the multiple layers of clothing that women usually wore at the time like she was just wearing let's say normal nightgown that is long and maybe a little transparent and she was just like sitting on the bed and everything let's say the blanket was just down to her knees but and then, because of how she was looking, James was like, you're trying to seduce me. So, Jane was like, um, that's what James said. Like, the, the Camden, the L of Camden. Then, Jane quickly pulled the best shades off her shoulder. She was like, ah, it's nothing like that, too. Do you understand? She just explained that it's, I'm not trying to. That I'm really just here because I don't have any, anywhere to go. I truly need employment. It, although she wasn't saying made sure, but there is really nothing else for, else for her to do there other than be made. So, James replied that if she was proven to be innocent, he'll give her employment. So, after that, that same evening, James had a meeting with his friends, the Viscount Harrington and the Earl of Rockfell, like another Earl now, who was visiting his own 
place like uh, who was within James estate so they were present on his estate at the time of Tatiana's mother he didn't suspect them all because how could he they'd all been friends since their days at Eton Eton is like a secondary school that rich people used to attend at their day rich influential people and they knew Tatiana they cared for her like his friends Harrington and Rockefeller, they cared for Tatiana I mean they'd been around her since um you know all of them were 13 right and so that sort of thing so he did suspect that they were the ones who were just there you know like just talking to him offering him comfort kind of thing and you understand because james had the funeral arrangements to take uh, take care of and he couldn't continue playing good host to his friends they went horse riding while james stayed behind like i don't get okay sure let's keep going he had another chat with Jane and started noticing certain words she was using, like hitched a ride when he was like, okay, how did she get it? She was like, oh, I hitched a ride from so-and-so place. And she would say, okay, instead of all right. And then she would say, at the back of carriages. Oh, I just hate at the back of the carriage. Instead of saying rare birds. You know, she wasn't really using the words of the time. Obviously, she knew the, the words. She, she was using as much old English as she could because as a historical fiction author, you would have been using them to write now. Like my kind of person who is a lot of historical fiction. Most of the time, I'm, I'm trying to speak normal English, but I'm using old English. Or maybe, actually, when you read the version of King James Bible, you'll be using old English without trying. I mean, I've, I've had a few problems with my employers in terms of, one of them was like, y- y- your words just sound so too poetic. Make it simpler, simpler. I mean, it was annoying at first when she was saying it, but when I started noticing what she was saying, it really helped my writing because now I'm like, what's the easiest way I can say something instead of trying to sound poetic or too old Englishy? But the truth is, if it starts to catapult me to a 17th century scenario, I'm not going to even use... I will use more modern words than old English. So it was not easy because James was, um, Jane was trying so hard to use old English there. But most, many modern English words were just coming out of her mouth. And James is a smart person, so he noticed. But, and that sort of thing. So anyhow, they were distracted. Like he wanted to ask her more about where she coming from and all of that. But they were distracted when Jane saw this Pride and Prejudice um, novel you know, by Jane Austen on his bookshelf. According to James, Miss Austen was a friend of his and she'd gifted him the book, so he'd read it. And Jane was just so amazed, like, you actually read a story, like a fiction story a woman wrote. And she was just looking at him amazingly and, you know, and the way she was just looking at him, James didn't like it because according to him, in his head, it was threatening his celibate state. And it, was make, it, it made him start flirting with her because he now started quoting the opening lines of the book to show her that, yes, I truly read it. And they were still talking when someone came to inform James that Betsy had been found. You know, Betsy, the maid of his sister who, who, just, who was just killed, Tatiana's maid now. Or rather, her body. Someone had murdered her too. James suspected it was the same person who murdered his sister, Tatiana, that did this deed. So he called Jane to his study and exonerated her. So he further said that if she didn't have a husband she was running from or any problem with the law, she was welcome to work as a maid on his estate. When she asked why he changed his mind about her, he said that Bessie's body was found in the stable stalls and she couldn't have been the one to do it since she was under lock and key. Also, Bessie was carried over to the stables after she was killed. It was a feat that Jane was incapable of. So do you see why he was like saying that, okay, you, you can't be the one who killed my sister because we found the maid in the stalls. And she wasn't killed in the stalls. Someone c- carried her dead to the stalls after killing her. And we know that you were under lock and key. So you couldn't have killed her and carried her dead. Yeah, so J- Jane was like, but um, what if I- that person killed Jane in the store? What if the person didn't carry her body dead? Yeah, James was like, nah, that it rained that night. That didn't like that last night now that if that Tatiana was killed, that Jane just arrived at the 17th century. It rained. You know how it was raining when she got there, and it was muddy. Yes, there was not a speck of mud on Bessie's clothing, so she couldn't have gone to the store that time it was raining and gotten killed. It's you understand, and the, obviously her body was freshly killed, so it was like that previous night too. So it was it was a man they were looking for, a strong man who could have carried Betsy after killing her. Did get so Jane Jane was just relieved that. Oh my gosh, I'm no longer under suspicion. So if she actually could have left at that point, back to the future, she would have. But she couldn't. So the next thing is a house, right? So she now agreed that, okay, she's going to work on the estates as a maid. So 
like that they called mrs fontaine mrs fontaine is a housekeeper and they now asked um jane um james asked her the earl of camden i think i was just saying the earl of camden or or camden or james sha i'm talking about the same person so james called up mrs fontaine and asked her to give jane a mate's position and also asked that jane should use betsy's room yeah, they, they, he clarified to the housekeeper that he wasn't trying to replace Betsy, like she was some broken dish, because the housekeeper was suggesting, like, hey, I hope you're not trying to replace Betsy. Obviously, she was saying it respectfully, but it was still kind of a shade. Like, why just bring in his random girl? James, Betsy was just confirmed dead. You're trying to put someone in her room. James was just like, Jane's help is needed at this time because Tatiana just died. We'll be having a lot of guests and there are not enough hands to help. So just take Jane in. Let her be a help, right? That kind of thing. So as for Jane, and she was just wondering, my God, how am I? How could I become a maid? She obviously this girl just came from 21st century. She has never been a maid in her life. How will she clean out chamber pots? Ah, this is disgusting. So meanwhile, Mrs. Fontaine did not know what was going on in her head. Now she just gave her apron and a tour of her duties. Jane was just like praying, ah, oh, please, I beg, let my stay in this century not be long. Let let lightning strike again soon. Let me just go back home. So, anyhow, unfortunately for Jane, she had the experience of meeting James' mother when she served the woman tea. I mean, this kind of thing that the woman raised a glass and she, she carried the teapot and rushed to her and was like, may I? The woman was like, that why are you asking? That you see I'm holding the cup. That you asking the question just shows um, inexperience and ambition and unfortunate combination. Ah, abba. Just answer, do you want to? Yes, no. Okay, but... <laughs> Anyone, she had, Jane did not know because it's her first time being a maid. And the woman is, has had maids all her life. So maids are not supposed to talk or be vocal, that sort of thing. So anyhow, the, that, that, just, that tiny experience just with Jane's mother, the woman already decided, hey, I don't like this maid. The, the, the girl did not do anything. You know, just decided she's ambitious. Okay. So meanwhile, James was just, um, Jane observed that this um, woman did not show any emotion, although she just lost her daughter. She was just, you don't even know if she's the one self that her daughter died because Jane had to ask this other maid with her, Margaret. Margaret was like, ah, that's, Jane. that's um, Tatiana's mom, Tatiana and James' mother. So when Jane went to refill the empty pot, the empty teapot, because the teapot finished when they finished that, like when they were seven, everybody there now. And she was returning to another way. She saw James standing by himself. And looking lost she fell for him and she now approached him with the teapot she now offered him tea and refreshments when she was leaving he thanked her because nobody had no one else had bothered to ask him if he wanted anything or offered him anything they've just left the guy as far the thing about you know when someone is mourning is most people don't know what to say to him so they're just kind of leaving him in his own space not really asking if he eats not anything but it was jane that just braved approaching him to be like Okay, would you like to have tea and um, some scones or something? Do you get? So, you know, she asked about his friends and he was like, ah, they went for a ride to lighten the mood since death was a dull business. Jane didn't like how this sounded. I mean, we know death is a dull business, but why can't you just hang around your friend? Meanwhile, his friend Rockwell and the Harrington person, they came to James that evening to offer some company. Now, Harrington, the Viscount, was supposed to marry Tatiana soon but then she died james knew that harrington didn't love his sister and he was like he said so so it led to a mild argument and harrington argued that he cared for her regardless and would have given her a comfortable and happy life moreover james had approved of their match so where was this accusatory tone coming from because now uncle is just throwing shades everywhere like james now because he's just trying to be like who did this thing what motive did they have so low-key he's really just taking a jab at everybody around him you know not that so, meanwhile, Rockwell, seeing what James was doing, it was like, okay, I think all of us will just go back to our own house since things are heating up. But James was like, no, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I really didn't mean this. Yeah, I, I appreciate your company. But the next thing, he just launched into questions, asking Har Harrington, did Tatiana seem happy to you? Harrington was like, yeah, she was excited about the gown she would wear at the official announcement of our, of our engagement next month. She just, you know, she, she wanted, she was so excited that I would see her in the gown and all of that. So Rockwell barely had an interaction with the, with the girl in question besides just, oh, hello, how are you doing? You know, just normal greeting and pass. That was all the interaction Rockwell had with her. They get. So all her attention was mostly fixated on Harrington, who, who's, who's her fiancé now, so he's supposed to be. Meanwhile, 
Rockwell asked James to consider the footman, good dad, because he'd seen this um, footman speaking to Lady Tatiana privately a few times. And whenever he approached, they would just like, you know, scatter. So that was kind of suspicious. So James was like, definitely I'll check that out. After his friends left him, Jane came with a note she found between the pages of a book in Tatiana's bedchamber. The housekeeper had asked her to clean the room and a book of poems had caught James' attention. Like Tatiana had, obviously all these rich people those days used to have like, you know, libraries of books and all that in their rooms. And obviously when you're clean as a maid, it's not your business to go to those things. But Jane is a 21st century girl and she's stepping into the past and she's seeing the first edition. So there's all that excitement and thrill for her. So she couldn't resist approaching the book of poems and, you know, a note fell, fell, fell out from one of them. James was just angry. Like, why would you go through my sister's things? Jane was like, it's not like that. She was really hot. She was like, if I wanted to look like I did not go through her things, I wouldn't have brought this note to you. But I did it so that you can find out the truth behind her mother. So this whole, they were arguing and then they got into this position where he grabbed her upper arms and their faces were met inches away. Out of the blue, James commented that he was glad that Jane left her fiancé to come to him, to defy him. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Like, we're arguing one minute here, telling me you don't trust me. Why am I going through your sister's things? Next thing, you're yeah, yeah, like, why that? I'm happy you came here. That you came here. I'm happy you came here to defy me. Nobody has done this thing before. Jane was like, ah, uh-uh. ah. I did not know you want to be defied though. Regardless, the whole thing just vexed her. She just slapped the note against his chest, got like, you know, freed herself from his hold and left the room. Then she spent the next day avoiding him because she was just shaken. Like, why is that each time I come close to this guy, I'm like super attracted to him and I'm not meant to, I mean, he's like 200 years old, my senior, right? He doesn't know that, but it's true. And she just couldn't afford to like him, yeah? And Jane was with Margaret, this other maid who had become her friend. And the girl really helped Jane Shaw, like, settle into being a maid and everything. So they were just chatting about a number of things. Then Jane started asking some questions. It led to Jane asking some questions. You know, it started with if James had ever come close to marriage before. He hadn't. Then what about the male acquaintances of Tatiana? Because now um, Jane was trying to find out who sent that note. Like, who could have written the words, I cannot bear to be apart from you either. The years we spent together remain the most precious ones of my life. So she was trying to find out who wrote those words to late Tatiana. So she narrowed it down to a tutor that Tatiana had when she was 16 years old. Meanwhile, James's mother, meanwhile, the next day, oh, okay, no, no, it's that same day. That same day she was avoiding James now after the encounter at the study. That day, like that was two days. This is two days now after Tatiana's mother. James, his mother, and their guests, they attended Tatiana's burial ceremony. So this is in the middle of the ceremony that we are trying to bury somebody peacefully who just was murdered. And James' mother just told James, eh, I don't like that mate that you hired. Ah, uh-uh. James was just mad. Like, but he, was, he, he, he just calmly reminded her that she didn't like pretty women in general because she was spiteful. That's what he told his mother. As in a, but what is with mothers of the you know, 17th century and being old and being so cold. Like, they're so cold, eh? See, they, their mom in Bridgerton, she's an exception. That woman is warm and everything. But I think it's because she and her husband had a loving relationship. Most men at those times are scoundrels who would have mistresses up and down, sleep with all the mates. So I feel like under such situations, women easily got so bitter and spiteful. But I feel if... You know, you see a woman from a love match, she would definitely be more warm and more warm and open and everything. Like that, their mom in Bridgerton. So the next morning, James called for a maid and it was Jane that he sent up. You know, you don't have a choice to be like, oh, I'm not going because I'm avoiding him. So I don't think she could have even helped going up to, you know, attend to him when he rang for a maid. So he hadn't seen her in two days and noticed that every time he saw her, he only just grew more attracted to her. So he blamed this on his celibacy, which he'd gone on because of greedy women. Like, literally, James had been celibate because he was like, women are greedy. Or rather, the women around him. It didn't make sense to him to spend a fortune to keep a mistress so that he could just stay with her. And the other options besides keeping a mistress was hiring a prostitute, like going to a hotel, or getting married. And those options were just not pretty to him because... Marriage then was like for title, for wealth, for status. And James was like, okay, if those are my options, let me just let me just do my day. That kind of thing. So James asked Jane to 
I forgot. Honestly, James asked Jane, like, it's, it's just so rhymey that don't mix it up. The L asked Jane to join him. The, can, the L of Camden asked Jane to join him for a cup of coffee, even though she protested. It's not proper, but I should love to get an extra cup. James was like, what, what the hell am I doing with this girl? Like, this, this is the same woman I just accused, like, how many days ago of killing my sister. And now I want to have her by any means possible. Like, what, what the hell am I doing? You understand? So by the time she returned, she asked him directly, what is it you want from me? Like, why are we dilly-dallying around this dance? Obviously, that's not what most women in that era would do. And had doing it been upfront, it always just gets James by shock. He's always shocked, like, why are you, why are you so bold? But we know why she's this bold. I mean, women of our century, I mean, <laughs> we still ask us questions, like, drop it like bump. Just tell me what's going on here. Let's figure this out and find a way forward, yeah? So there were three, you know, when he was like, okay, I want three things from you. I want your opinion, you know, concerning this mother thing. Like, he wanted her objectivity. He wanted her companionship. And most of all, he wanted her. She was like, okay, I can give you the first two things, but not the third. James was both disappointed and irritated. Like, okay, why not? Why don't you want? Why, why, don't, why, don't, you, why, why don't you want me, Abby? Why can't you... Why can't I have you? That kind of thing. She was like, because my situation is far too complicated to allow for any personal attachments. Now, what did she answer? You know, she, at least, so funny thing is her answer gave him hope. At least she didn't say that she didn't like him. So they got down to business, like discussing, all right, let's look at this mother situation. Who could have done it? And the reason why James wanted her perspective and her opinion is because she's not personally involved with anyone in the case. So her emotions are not invested unlike his. Because when he asked her, who do you think wrote this note? She was like, I believe it was Tatiana's former tutor, Judge Thompson. She had already asked questions now. So James found it difficult to accept the idea that his sister would have anything to do with a man of lower standing. Again, do you see why he needs her? Already, his emotions are getting involved here. She's telling him the person who sent the news, and he's like, eh, boy, he's of lower standing. How my sister have anything to do with that kind of person? But I also like James com- um, Jane's comeback. She was like, uh, okay, like, it's not worse than you considering your mate. You just propositioned me right now, and you're finding it hard to think that your sister would be with someone, like, of lower standing as well. James just felt so, ch- so chastised by this common sense of hers. Now, the George Thompson guy seems to have been in frequent correspondence with Tatiana, like they've been talking often, although he had been gone from the ex-state three years. So going by this, Tatiana wasn't in love with Harrington, right? You know, this was the girl that was about to marry his friend. And although James knew his friend wasn't in love with his sister, this whole, you know, correspondence thing with this former tutor showed that Tatiana wasn't in love with um, the Harrington either. Because when, remember, she was just excited about the gown she was going to wear for the official announcement of their engagement. Like, it's a gown that she was excited about. So, if Harrington knew this... So, so James was like, what if Harrington knew that my sister didn't love him? That makes Harrington a suspect because he might have wanted her to love him. And he might have found out, okay, she's, in, she's talking to this other guy. And it's enough reason for me to murder her. You understand? That sort of thing. At least this was actually um, Jane's reasoning. and But James was like, I don't want to believe this. This is my friend. Jane just had calmly had to tell him there are three reasons why a person would commit murder, money, passion, and the need to silence a witness. For Harrington, it might have been passion. So they get. This would obviously lead James to now approach his friend. Yeah? So meanwhile... When Jane took up some water for Rockwell's bath in his room, Rockwell, the other friend now, the James' under friend, he just suggested that he sh- that she should ease James' pain and offer him pleasure. They get so okay, okay. They get so, and the thing is, the he was just so vocal about it, like it wasn't a respectful way. Obviously, everybody in the house at this point knew that. Um, James was interested in um, Jane. I mean, it was really obvious. You just suspected someone of doing this. You just didn't send them away. You're keeping them close by. You're constantly talking to them. I mean, everybody kind of had the inclination of, oh, the Earl of Camden likes Jane, this new maid, and all of that. Uh, But Rockwell, his reason was, okay, this guy is going through a hard time, so why not sleep with him? Like, straight up. And Jane was breathless. Like, And she was certainly tempted, even though she was like, 
why would this guy just suggest this thing outrightly? But even still, it was just such a temptation and she wanted to, like she really wanted to. But it was hard for her and it was really was it, it really was just hard for her to keep resisting this pull that she felt towards James. You know, it had never been like that for her. Like she never felt something that strong, not even towards Geoffrey that she just ended things with. But the main thing that was holding her back from like going to jump this guy or whatever was this. There was a possibility that she might never return to the future. You know, in as much as you just got transported into the past and it's not of your fault. You don't even know how it happened. But there's a possibility that this is where you might end up staying, spending the rest of your life. And Somerville might be all the home she knew. So if this happens to be true, by sleeping with the master, she'll create a bad reputation for herself. And the other employees will just consider it an act of betrayal and they will judge her. I mean, it's it's one thing to sleep with like a friend of your master, but sleeping with your master... The rest of the mates, it's, it's, it's just straight up on employment they're looking for. Do you understand? And she, it's not something you can afford. They get so. Meanwhile, Jane also ran into Snipes, James' man of business. Like one of the two men that was with James the night that they discovered um, Tatiana's body, that Tatiana was murdered. And although the man's eyes were kind, they were filled with a lot of pain as well. Like, Jane was just thinking, why is he hurting so much because of Tatiana's person? It's more than just a regular oh, we lost the mistress of the house, kind of hearted. And then there was a way he strokes Jane's cheek and she was uncomfortable and she was like, wow. she was trying to like give me a piece of her mind. But something he said stopped her in her tracks. She was like, am I so abhorrent that not even you, a man maid, would take a fancy to me? Ah, uh-uh. ah. Where is that statement coming from? Have we had anything to do with each other before? Do you understand? So I think God had to think in, who else had rejected him that he's making a statement like this? Because it can't just be this mild thing. That you are drawing all this thing you are saying from. So as Jane went to... So Jane, Jane was like, I'm going to go to James and tell him this. Because there's something here. There's really something here. But as she was going there... While she went to the study... She had to break up this tense atmosphere between him and Harrington. Like Harrington and James were... Like James had already called Harrington to his study. He was not asking him questions. Concerning the engagement with his sister. Going public. She was like, so you knew she loved someone else. Not you. And... That means she couldn't have been excited about announcing the the what do you call it your, the, the, um your engagement. Harrison was like, ah, it's not like that. See, that two days before, like the day before um Tatiana died, she came to me, me that is Harrington, and then she confirms that she loves someone else. But he he wasn't, but he, it wasn't a man she could marry. They get. He was a former tutor, that Thompson guy, the Judge Thompson guy. Like, Tatiana literally came to Harrington and said, I love someone else. Is this guy. And But Harrington didn't really mind this news since he knew their marriage wouldn't be a love match. Like, as him and, like, whatever him and Tatiana are going to do, it's not like they love each other, but they just care for each other. So he was like, okay, it's fine if you love this other guy. I'll give you a freedom. You can continue this relationship. And me too, you just allow me that same freedom. So it was just kind of this marriage of convenience thing and stuff. And James was like, how could you permit such a thing? Like, why why are you not bothered? What about children? Harrison was like, if Tatiana had had any child by, you know, by her lover or whoever, he would have accepted that child as his own. Do you understand? And that was it. The, Harrison was just so pain. He even like touched James, shaking this affectionate way. Just kind of gathered himself, put on this cool facade, left the room. And since Jane was present to witness this encounter, right? James asked if um Jane if she believed him. Like, do you do you, do you just believe this guy? Do you believe what this guy said? Jane did. She was like, I, I, I believe him. And she was like, How long have you known this guy? And James was like, We've known each other since we were thirteen years old. And yeah, you, you get like and Jane was like, You've known him that long and you never realized he was in love with you uh, this was just like a huge shock to james and he was like how can you say that that that's not proper da, 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 da. james was like calm down i'm not trying to put ideas into your head it's just i'm trying to let you know that your friend is going through an extraordinary loneliness that no one would understand because where his affections ever discovered it's a crime punishable by death in this time so I actually think that what Harrington offered to your sister Tatiana was kind. Like he he was really kind to her. James was just so amazed that 
how is your different how is your view so different from anybody else well we know again it's because she came from the 21st century yeah so it's, it's, she's like she's seen a world he can't because she's been in that world which is our world he lives in a far back world so you know obviously by him being amazed by her comfort by her presence he's holding on to her waist and he's pleading with her saying oh i need you he kisses her they kiss for a while so they've gone on longer but james stops everything because he's like i refuse to form an attachment to you unless you're completely honest with me so jane was just like should i tell him the truth should i not tell him the truth and if i tell him the truth and he still doesn't believe me it's going to cripple me do you understand so James, meanwhile, was just like trying to like probe for the truth. Like, what exactly is it that you can't tell me? Has your innocence been compromised? That is, are you no longer a virgin? She's not. What else was there? Okay, she's like, took the leap of faith. She was like, okay, I was born on March 1, 1990. That was like nearly 200 years away from the moment they are talking. Obviously, James does not believe her. Like, why would I believe? He was just like, ah. He was, he, in fact, he looked at how we pity. Like, ah, did you suffer a blow to the head? I mean, she knew this reaction was normal. Like, she expected that kind of reaction, but it hurt so bad. So she just changed the subject and was like, okay, the, look at, I came up here in the first place because of Snipe, right? So Snipe was with James when they heard Tatiana scream. They've been talking for about 10 minutes, you know, so she started asking questions and found out that James and him had been talking for about 10 minutes and the rain had started sometime in the middle of their conversation. So Jane wondered if it was possible that Snipes committed a crime before the conversation with James. James is agree, saying they both heard Tatiana scream. But what if it wasn't Tatiana who screamed? Like, are you seeing where this is going? Right? Because everyone became a suspect from here on out. The butler, the grooms, the footman, the valet, and Rockwell. Right? Like, everyone is literally suspect, starting with Snipes. And James, again, was trying to defend everybody. No, no, no. Everybody in my house is loyal. No, 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 no. My friends could not have done this because they knew my sister and cared for her. But Jane calmly reminded him that he hadn't known the most important thing about Harrington. I mean, let's just use what just happened here. You didn't know, like, that your friend Harrington was in love with you, yeah? So James was like, oh, Jesus, about that. How the hell am I supposed to act around him now? Jane was like, just remember he's your friend. Protect the secret. In fact, pretend you don't even know the secret. Just keep treating him normal. They, they were, you understand, they were still talking, but they got interrupted by James' mother. So, I'll go hard to leave. So, who do you think did it? Do you think it's Knives? Do you think it's Rockwell? I mean, Harrington has been cleared, and we feel bad for him. <laughs> At least I feel somewhat bad for him. And then this Knives guy, like, do you, you know, is it possible that he could have killed Tatiana? was talking with James, but someone else found Tatiana's body and just screamed and rushed away. And it was James now discovered the body. Like, who did this crime? That's literally what we are out to find. Um, will James be able to return to the future? How will her love story with James play out? Like, what is going to happen, right? So we're going to continue, you know, we're going to continue the story. <laughs> On Thursday, I really talk so much longer than I usually do, but I really hope you enjoy this and you'll stop with me through. Thank you. Bye.